Hi everyone. Today we are going to study derivation of equation of the ellipse with center at origin and vertex on y axis. Here is the ellipse. The center is at the origin with coordinates 0, 0. Now let us draw the vertices. This is the first vertex denoted by V, and the second vertex is V prime. Remember, the vertices are the points where the ellipse crosses the Y axis. Take note that the line segment connecting the two vertices, we call that major axis. Let us assign this length to be 2a. By then, we can put the coordinates of the v and the v prime respectively. So we have 0a for the v and 0 negative a for the v prime. Next are the foci, denoted by f and f prime respectively. The line segment connecting the foci is assigned to be 2C. It means to say, we can now write also the coordinates of the foci respectively. These are 0C and 0, negative C, respectively. Next are the points B and B. B prime. These are the points where the ellipse touches the x axis. The line segment connecting these two points we call that the minor axis. Let us assign the value to be for this length. In this case, we can now assign the coordinates of the endpoints of the minor axis. The coordinates are B0 and negative B0 respectively. Let us take one point of the ellipse denoted by P with coordinates XY. This moving point we will take the distance from the first focus also the distance from this moving point to the second focus. By definition of ellipse, the distance FP plus the distance F'P is always constant. Take note that when this P moves around and touches the vertex V, we can deduce that the value k equals 2a. It means this is the same with the length of the major axis. It means to say we can change this value k by 2a. So here we go. From here, we can now use the distance formula between two points. The distance fp is now the big square root of the x minus 0, the quantity squared, plus y minus c, and this is also squared, plus the distance f prime p is now x minus 0, and the quantity is squared, plus the y minus negative c. So we write here y plus c and the quantity is squared and all of this is equal to 2a. Let us simplify further this x minus 0 and the x minus 0 here can be simplified into x. That's why we write here x square and here it is also x square. Let us simplify this equation 
by isolating one radical. Let's say this radical here, let us transpose on the right side. So from positive, it becomes negative. So here we go. And from here, let us square both sides. Look at the left side. If we square this, the big square root will be cancelled out. Only the radicand will come down here. And this is equal to the square of the right side. So here we have a binomial that when we square, there will be three terms in the answer. So squaring the left side, we have now the radicand here. And this is equal to squaring this binomial, the first term is the square of 2a. So we have 4a square. This is the second term. This is the product of 2a and this big radical and times 2. And the third term is the square of this second term of this big radical. So the negative sign becomes positive and the big radical is cancelled. Only the radicand comes down here. Let us observe now the left side and the right side. There is an x square here and also an x square on the right side. And both can be cancelled. Let us write again without those cancelled terms. From here, let us now expand the squares here and here respectively. So the square of y minus c e is y square minus 2cy plus c square. We will copy this and this down here and then let us square this y plus c. So we have now y square plus 2cy plus c square. Let us again observe the left side and the right side. There is a y square on the left and also y square on the right. So we can cancel these terms. There is also c square on the left side and c square on the right side. We can also cancel the c squares. And then let us simplify further. Let us isolate the big radical alone on this right side. It means this positive 2cy we will transpose on the left side. From positive, it becomes negative. But there is negative 2cy here. So it means we can combine these two terms. Later, it will be negative 4 cy. There is also the 4a square here. We will transpose on the left. So from positive, it becomes negative. This is now our equation. We can see that there is a common constant that we can cancel. Let us divide this equation by negative 4. So we have now cy plus a square equals a times the big radical. Let us cancel the radical here by squaring again this equation. So the cy plus a square, when we square this binomial, it will be d square y square plus 2cy a square plus a raised to 4 equals, let us square the right side. So we have a now becomes a square. And when we square this radical here, that radical sign goes away. Only the radicand comes down. Let us simplify further by expanding this square here. So we have 
to copy all and this square y plus c becomes y square plus 2cy plus c square. Next is this a square. Let us distribute to all the terms inside the grouping symbol. So we have now a square x square plus a square y square plus 2cy a square plus a square c square. Let us observe again the left side and the right side. Look at this 2cy a square. There is also the same term on the right side. So we can cancel these terms. From here, let us put together all terms with x or y and put together all the constants on the left side. This c square y square has y variable, so we will transpose this on the right. From positive, it will be negative later. Look at this term here, a square c square. This is a constant. We are going to transpose this on the left. So from positive, it becomes negative. Here we go. Look now at this left side terms. There is a common factor and that is a square. We can factor it out. Also, look at the last two terms in here. There is a common factor and that is y square. So we can factor it out also. So we have now a square times the quantity a square minus c square. For the right side, when we factor out the y square, the remaining terms here will be a square minus c square. Take note that when the moving point P touches one of the endpoints of the minor axis, say B, we can form a right triangle here. This length is equal to A, this length here is C, and this side here is B. So by Pythagorean theorem, we can write A square equals B square plus C square. We can put the C square on the left side. We can see now that A square minus C square equals B square. In the equation here, the A square minus C square, we will change this by the value B square. So we have now A square times B square equals this value we will copy down here plus again this a square minus e square is now changed into b square and then that y square is here. And now let us divide this equation by a square b square. So we have 1 equals x square over b square plus y square over a square. This is now the equation of ellipse with center at origin and vertex on y axis. Take note that the major axis is on the y axis and that is equal to 2a. Also, the minor axis is on the x-axis and the value is equal to 2b. Now, for the latus rectum, we have two lateral recta here. For us to find the endpoints coordinates of the latus rectum respectively, we're going to substitute the value of y equal c to the equation. Here is the y square. It is now changed into c square. 
A while ago, by Pythagorean theorem, we say that c square equals a square minus b square. It means this value c square we're going to change by a square minus b square. So here we go. And from here, we're going to distribute the denominator to each term of the numerator. So we have now a square over a square minus b square over a square. We can simplify this a square over a square. That is equal to 1. And from here, we can see that this constant 1 has a counterpart of 1 on the right side. So we can cancel the constants 1 respectively. It means to say the right side becomes 0. Let us now solve for x. This negative b square over a square, let us transpose on the right side. From negative, it becomes positive. Next, this b square, which is the denominator of the x square, let us cross multiply to the numerator of the right side. So this b square times b square becomes b raised to 4 over a square. Let us take the square root of both sides to get the value of x. So we have now x equals plus or minus b square over a. So this is now the value of the x coordinates for the endpoints of the latus rectum. So you see here, for the endpoints of latus rectum, the coordinates are plus or minus b square over a comma c. This is the first endpoint and this is the second endpoint. For the second latus rectum, the endpoints have coordinates plus or minus b square over a comma negative c. This is the first endpoint, which is the positive b square over a comma negative c, and this is the other endpoint. The length of each of the latus rectum, denoted by LLR, is equal to 2b square over a. The eccentricity denoted by E equals C over A. I hope you learned something from this video. See you again next time.